Hello and welcome to another Expert Sales Insight. Today I am delighted to be joined by Hugh McFarlane, who is in Melbourne, Australia, a beautiful part of the world. Hey, Hugh, how are you doing? John, I'm doing well, and thank you for having me on the show. And my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm here in San Diego, another beautiful part of the world. Uh, so today, what I wanted to talk to Hugh about was really talk about process and, and sales and marketing shared processes and you know how that can really impact um, impact sales and revenue generation. So, um, you know, Hugh, uh, you, you uh, helped write a book uh, many years ago on the leaky funnel. Um, and ever since then, you know, you've continued to do work around process. So why is process so important? John, you would know from your professional career, and many of your listeners would know as well, that sales uh, has attempted to have process for many years. Mm -hmm. The idea of there, of there being a sales process is not a new idea. The idea that marketing might also like to have a process um, uh, sounds a little unfair, but but often is absent. Mm -hmm. Sales, I think, would would struggle to to not have a process. Marketing is is getting on to that same path as well. The challenge is if marketing process and sales process are not connected, then we've got all sorts of um, um, uh, inefficiencies in the business and uh, what we we looked uh, with a study that we published uh, with Marketo not so long ago was what the effect of having an aligned process was and the results were pretty uh, pretty enlightening so uh, so tell us what were some of those uh, results because um, obviously at the end of the day when you're building process you're really building it with your customer in mind as opposed to what kind of works for you internally right well put, and uh, I wish I had fed that to you in our pre-conversation. <laughs> I wasn't that clever. I, I coined the term the buyer's journey in 2003, and it's now a very commonly used mm -hmm. expression. I'm kind of glad I didn't trademark it because we needed an expression. And all I was trying to describe at the time was the buyer thinks something, and then they think something else, and then they think something else. Mm -hmm. And our marketing tactics and our sales tactics should be designed to help them move from A to B to C. That's really all I was trying to get at with this concept of the buyer's journey. I didn't invent it. I just invented the name. Uh, and um, if our process is properly designed, this is your point, John, it'll be designed around helping the buyer move from A to B to C. So we, we kind of need to know what A and B and C are, and we kind of need to know what's the best way to get them from A to B to C. And that's really where the aligned process is important because if marketing's doing, and I hate this expression, air cover, mm -hmm. that's a get-out-of-jail-free card. I'm just going to make sure that some people know about us some of the time. That's mm -hmm. such a wafty, mm -hmm. lost expression. Uh, you know, If I'm in sales, I've got a quota, and I need to sell $3 million this year. That's it. And I win or I lose if I, if I make that number. Right. Marketing needs to be held to account for the same kind of quantifiable processes. It's just that marketing's role might be early, Mm -hmm. But it's not air cover. It's how many names do you need me to get? How many of those names do you need me to get sufficiently worried about the problem that you're in the business of solving? How many of those do you need me to get? Uh, and so on. And so why, if I'm marketing your sales, John, wind me into the process. Let's have a shared process. Measure me on some of those steps and you on some of those steps. Yeah, and and that's uh, and that seems to be um, something that people are waking up to. It's taken it's taken a while uh, because there has always been these kind of artificial demarcations. It's like you know, marketing say I'll take the process to here and then I'll throw it over the wall and then you run with it from there. But getting back to the point about the the, the buyer's journey is like the buyer hasn't demarked things so so neatly for you, <laughs> right? So there's a lot of overlap. So when you're building, helping companies build process between sales and marketing, how do you uh, how do you um, work with that kind of fluid overlap that seems to be taking place now between sales and marketing? Uh, again, John, your question somewhat cunningly implies the answer. <laughs> you need to do it together. Uh, sales and marketing need to be in the room together. And frankly, we often get operations and finance in the room as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, figuratively and literally. Right. Yeah, there's no, there's no point sales going off and building a process and marketing trying to build a pre-process. Get them in the room together and build the process together. Um, and that's not just so they have an aligned process, but it's not the case that marketing 
gets the top of funnel and sales gets the bottom of funnel because many opportunities are created by sales. Well, heck, that's top of funnel. Mm -hmm. And many opportunities are well progressed before they get handed over to sales. Well, that's marketing. And so uh, going way deep into the funnel. And so you need to get them together, work out what the best process that we can possibly come up with to help the buyer move from A to B to C and then all the way through to G or whatever stages you you like to have. We we have some language around that, but I'm sticking with the idea of our journey rather than the specificity of what what the stages are called. And agree, what's the best way we can move them from each of those stages to each next one? And then, so how about you pick up that one and I'll pick up this one? That's later rather than what's marketing's bit and what's sales' bit. It's what's our process together and then how do we build it together? Yeah, and I like uh, that that uh, what you just outlined there because, uh, as you say, that kind of explodes the whole my bit comes here and then your bit comes after because of the fact that you could be marketing could be going further into the what was once the sales process and ever before sales could be going into what was typically considered marketing uh, territory before. So there's a kind of they need each other a lot more. So getting them together, I think, obviously the first thing you have to do is get them to see that there's a shared vision, right? A shared vision and a shared process. And uh, let me give you a couple of quick stats yeah. from this report, and I'll, I'll try really hard to not bore your, your listeners <laughs> here. Just a few high points. Um, we, we know that sales needs a process, and that's often a good place to start. Uh, what we see, though, when sales introduces a good process is not necessarily an uptick in closure which you might expect, we actually see an uptick, in fact, a 26% uptick in sales' willingness to accept leads from marketing Mm. when sales has a good, clear process. And I think the reason for that is pretty simple, is that if I'm really clear about what the whole process looks like, I'm going to realize I can't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And so my willingness to take leads from marketing is going to go up 26% as it happens. When you then give marketing a clear process, we might expect the lead handover to improve by, because marketing now has its own process. Sure. That isn't the case. What we actually see instead is an uptick in the probability of any leads that come from marketing eventually closing. So quality. Again, I think it's quite quality, absolutely. If I'm a sales guy, I only care about closable leads. If you give me leads that don't close, you're just making me busy and not rich. <laughs> if I'm a sales guy and you're marketing, your job's to make me rich. Right. It, uh, so there's so there's an interesting point, right? So it takes obviously it takes uh it takes a little guts to put something in place like this because you know we're always about uh you know leading indicators or or so if if what you're saying say the volume of leads coming through might actually go down the quality goes up, but you have to manage yourself through that transition, if you like. And some people obviously get scared when things change like that, right? You, you, you spoke of uh, being brave, and I think it is. Uh, it does require that. You know, it comes down to who, who's going to lead this change. Um, we've done some analysis, largely for our own business, to try to understand who we should most be talking to. Is it head of marketing, head of sales, or the CEO of the business? Uh, and I use the term CEO clearly in a hundred um, billion dollar business. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the CEO, but right. it's who, who, who's ultimately responsible for sales and marketing, whether that's the CEO or a divisional head in a larger business. And candidly, it's exactly for us over 20 years, it's exactly a third, a third, a third. Okay. That is, it, it's not so much role dependent, it's who's got the guts. Mm-hmm. Who who can see that we need to have a single process? Who's going to lead the charge? Who's going to be willing to take a hit on quantity, your point, John, mm-hmm. over quality? And who's going to hold them both accountable uh, when they fail? Mm-hmm. And let's face it, the the bravery comes in 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 that period of time because it's very easy to switch back when when things start to go off a little bit. You go, oh, this isn't working. Let's just go back to the old way. So it's it's having the courage to keep going during that process of, of transition and change. I think is is really key. Uh, another piece, though, um, Hugh. So, so you get them in the room and you get them to define a process, right? Which is and and a good process, and that's a great starting point. But we know. Process doesn't work unless people actually adhere to the process. So how do you get people to actually follow the process and and, uh, and reinforce it? Some of it, some of it uh, comes down to clarity of the process. So we, um, um, 
we try to get the overall process and the strategy that sits behind the process down to a single page. And we do that because we want to see it up on the wall everywhere you look inside the building. So whether I'm in sales or I'm in marketing, I want to look up on the wall and see a one-page expression of what's the market, what are we trying to get them worried about, because when they get worried about that, they buy our stuff. Right. Uh, what, are we, what are we offering to solve that problem? Who are they explicitly? Um, what sales channel are we using to reach? And that's all the strategy stuff. Then the velocity, you know, sure, we need X million dollars worth of revenue, but how many deals is that going to come from next year? And to get that number of deals, how many, and then go back up the funnel, each of the prior stages, I want to see that, the velocity, and the final thing is the process or the tactics that we're going to use between us. All of that strategy and velocity and tactics, however you end up doing it, you want to see that on one page, up on the wall, and everybody scribbling all over it and living it. That's point one. Point two, you then have to measure it, and that's the job of the CRM. Uh, out of the box, most CRMs use sales stage language that speaks about uh, what have I done to the buyer mm -hmm. rather than where is the buyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the first thing I'd recommend is when you get your shiny new sales pop is you go and change the stages to be the language of the buyer to say, where are they, not where am I? Mm -hmm. uh, Hugh's trying to sell something to John and it actually doesn't matter at all, what, what Hugh's done, what matters is where's John got to. Yeah. So in the CRM, we want to measure where's the buyer got to, and that's easy to configure in sales, Bob, to change the stage names. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing I want to do is I want to look, want to look at that one-page plan. I want to compare it to what sales, Bob's telling me because I want to see where my plan and actual are, are adrift so that I'm not – just doing kind of random acts of marketing, I'm trying to fix a problem. If I've got a, an expected conversion of leads to proposal of 25% and I'm getting closer to 15, I know what I need to fix. Mm -hmm. no, how I, do I know it's got to be 25 or 15? That's the job of the plan. So you kind of need the plan and the CRM and they better be talking to each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I love your point because, yeah, that's what we refer to as buyer actions. And, and you know, even prior in, in my former life at a different company, we actually had a light bulb moment uh, when we were defining a sale. I was redefining a sales process soon after I got there, and I was uh, going through it. And I just looked at it, and we had we had adopted this buyer focused mantra. And I looked at the sales process, and to your point, we you know just said, "Hang on a second, that's got nothing to do with the buyer. It's all to do with us." And when we changed, flipped it around to buyer actions, then everything kind of fell into place. So I love that idea about uh, reinforcing the fact that it's, it's it's what your buyer does that matters. It's not so much what you do. Hundred percent. And and again, and I'll labour this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Your plan needs to describe what you just said, mm -hmm. and your CRM needs to measure what you just said, mm -hmm. and they need to be compared. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. So, if you got the if you got the 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 process in place, what have you seen from your research or from your own experience? What difference have you seen when you get a sales and marketing process aligned like this and it's working smoothly? You know, what kind of results do you see? We we looked at five hundred companies. Um, part of the problem for us as a consultancy is that we can't share the stories of our customers sure. because if I'm if I'm building sales pops sales and marketing process, mm -hmm. you don't want me to tell it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so we have to rely on anonymized aggregated data to answer questions like yours. <laughs> and that's why we did the study um, that we published with Marketo. So um, uh, here's here's the quick high points. If sales and marketing have a shared process. We see a 108% uptick in the probability of sales taking and acting on a lead from marketing. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's say if the average was 30%, you're going to get closer to 60% lead acceptance. You know, I, I see 80% is about the gold standard. Anything higher than 80% suggests that nobody's scrutinizing carefully <laughs> enough. Anything lower than that, we've got some wastage. So 108% uptick in sales acceptance. Wow. Second, second uptick that we see is 126% uptick in marketing's contribution to revenue. Mm -hmm. what, what that really means is if I look at the revenue that we generated as a business in its entirety last year, how much of that came from marketing-generated leads, and it's 126% more than happened last year. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, if that, that those statistics alone should uh, encourage anybody listening to start uh, looking at their internal processes and seeing how well marketing or sales are aligned. So, in in the last few minutes we have here, what would you say to what would you say to an organization who's considering doing this? Like, what's the first step in in really looking at uh, at, at uh, alignment and process? What what should they be doing? Pretty simple steps, um, none of them too controversial. Get sales and marketing in a room together mm -hmm. and lock the door until they agree <laughs> to the process, step one. Um, throw them pizza occasionally if you need to. Step two, whatever they end up expressing, get it down to one page. Right. Don't 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 write 20 slides or a 20-page Word document. Get it down on one page somehow. Mm -hmm. you know, carve it in the wall if you have to. Um, I mean, obviously, the reason we're talking is we have software that helps you do that. Mm -hmm. But frankly, carve, carve it in the wall ah, uh, if okay. that's your, your preferred method. Um, th third step is go back to that whatever that, that expression of your one-page plan is. Go back to that minimal, minimally go back every three months right. and relitigate it. What's working, what's not. And the only way that I'm going to know how, uh, know what's working and what's not is the step that I've jumped here, which is configure your CRM to be measuring mm -hmm. buyer progression, not seller activity. Yeah. Um, and compare what my CRM is telling me to what my plan is telling me. So build, build a plan together, um, boil it down to one page. Express your CRM as buyer progressions, not seller progressions, and compare them at least quarterly. Yeah, I I love that, and I love the idea of the one page because I I'm I'm a big believer in that, and I believe that if you can't get something like that down to one page, um, then it's number one, it's probably too complicated. Number two, you haven't really thought it through properly, and at the end of the day, if you want everybody in your organization aligned around something, you better make it understandable and simple, right? Blaise Pascal, the French philosopher, had a, had a beautiful expression, and he said, of course, he said in French, not English, but I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll try it in English. Uh, I'm writing you a long letter because I haven't the time to write you a short letter. Um, um, uh, much of our audience here is going to be in America, and everybody in America thinks that came from Mark Twain. It was actually Blaise Pascal, but uh, we, we can let Twain grab it as well. Um, but what they're basically saying is you've got to take the time to get it down to one page. Yeah. I, I can write a 20-page slide deck in, in you know, maybe a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. To get that down to one page that actually works, it's going to take me a week. Yeah, absolutely. That, I love but that. it's a week we're spending. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Okay, Hugh, in the last few moments here, uh, can you just spend a couple of uh, moments telling people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can learn more and how they can contact you? Terrific, and, and thank you for that invitation, John. So the, the best way to get in touch is via Funnel Plan. We, we have a one-page sales and marketing process design tool called Funnel Plan, and you can get that at funnelplan.com. And all of the dialogue that we, we can have in the future is via all the chat in, in funnelplan.com. Perfect. All right, listen, thanks, Hugh. Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline CRM. Delighted to have had the chance to talk with you in Australia, and I'll see you all again soon for another sales chat. Bye now. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.